Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And folks, we've got work to do, work to do. As you know, I just got off a campaign piece and tried to get certain issues on the table. And unfortunately, we're not, we may not be able to get those issues um, with me as part of the, the quote, uh, uh, this second tier, if you will, in the general election. However, we still have Oregon Voters Digest. And boy, I'll tell you, we're on top of things and we are definitely going to be a part of the, of the general election. And, uh, and so today what we're going to do, we're going to, again, like I said, we, that's what we're going to do. Okay, but today what we're going to focus on, probably the priority one, as far as I'm concerned, in our area, in the state of Oregon, is the whole issue of ed in education. And uh, so it really concerns me about whether or not, in fact, uh, uh, the, the folks who are going to be running for office and the media and whatever are going to really talk about some of the issues facing education. And so uh, we're going to try to be the point person to make sure that we get that on board. So tell your friends, tell your loved ones, tell your elected officials. To, hey, tune in, or if not that, some, some, at some point in time, we're going to probably even open up the lines. We're going to open up the lines and get you to be involved. So today, as usual, um, I've got with me today um, a, a guest. You've seen him before. Uh, actually, he's a co-anchor here on the show at the Oregon Voters Digest. But, you know, hey, the, 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 he's the education guy. He is the education guy. I'm talking about Steve Buell. He, he's, he's sitting now presently on Portland Public Schools Board, uh, Board of Education. And uh, that's, that's really an asset for us. And it's an asset for Oregon, it's an asset for Portland, and especially for the kids, okay? Very important. But before I start, I'd like to, again, recognize the vets. You know, uh, we just had Memorial Day, and, and they talked about uh, uh, D-Day, and it was about 75 years, 70 year history, 70 year history, 75 years, if you will. And I thought that was interesting. Brought back memories with me being in Vietnam and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, uh, and then we had all the issues with reference to uh, the VA and, and uh, the care of its vets and whatever. And it's very important. And in fact, of late, I've, uh, you know, it's like I'm donning my cap here in Vietnam and whatever and, and the like. And the rationale is this. If you've got loved ones who have been in the military and who have not registered, who have not registered with the VA, please get them out there. Because in all due respect, the VA is not, they are reaching out. They are kind of like trying to make amends, if you will. So if you've got, if you, if you are married or you've got kin folks or whatever that are vets that have not registered with the VA, please call up the VA. Please call up the VA. You can call up any agency, whether the city of Portland, Multnomah County, any of them, and tell them to give you the address of the VA. And you know, if not that, you can Google them or whatever. Or you can call me. In all due respect, you can call me at 503-701-0457. I'd be more than glad to to meet with them and, if necessary, pick them up and take them on over to the vet, to the VA. I mean, it's very important, very important during this time. Uh, it's very, very important. So, okay, that's my announcement. So now let's get on with the show. Again, like I said, I've got Steve Buell here who sits on the Portland School Board, and uh, we're going to go in and sort of get an update, if you will, of where we are. You know, that's what Steve was doing. And we just got out of the primary election, and again, like I said, I was very concerned about the fact we didn't spend enough time talking about the issue of education within our particular area here in the Portland metropolitan area and uh, and even on the state aspect of it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that. We're going to ask him other questions and whatever. And he's just going to give us an overview of, uh, of what's going on, bring us up to date. And hopefully these individuals that are going to be running for office are going to take advantage of that opportunity. Those individuals are going to be running in the general election and the media that's going to be covering that piece aspect of it. We're going to see if we can get those issues at the table, at the front end. And we, could, we, can, we can use your help too. So when those people, when you see those people knocking on your doors and asking you to vote for them or whatever, ask them the point of what about education? What about your kids? What about your grandkids and the like? Okay. With that, Steve, how you doing? Doing good. Good, good, good. Well, did you enjoy the, let's see, the Rose Festival? Did you go? I, I saw you on, I noticed you on a float or something. Were you on a float? <laughs> no, no <laughs> float. Were you on a float? <laughs> no float. I never made it. You know, it's, you, a, it's the end of the school year. Yeah, okay. I have a new girlfriend, and she's yeah, a school okay. teacher, and right. we're, she's 
kind of uh, same as I was at the end of the school year. Yeah. You, you get tired towards the end. Right, right, it's too yeah. bad the Rose Festival doesn't right. back a couple of weeks exactly. so you can kind of yeah. relax. Yeah. I, yes. it was, it's hard to get down there and get up early and yes. go because yes. you're pretty much exhausted right. by this right. time right. of year. Teachers right. aren't. Right. Well, anyway, but you know, it, it happened, right? The Rose Festival happened. Yeah, and and it, evidently it was a good one. It didn't yeah. rain. Yeah, and I guess the only other thing, I guess we got another big, uh, big uh, show, uh, big, big parade, if you will. It's called the uh, was it the Gay Pride Day coming up. And it's unfortunately, it's, uh, it's doing the same day as uh, Father's Day. And I've always requested them that it, it, if they could just move it up the following week. And because, you know, because Father's, is, is, it's another issue that we have in our community, trying to relate young men, especially to their fathers, you know, and, 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 the, kind of, and the kind of definition that fathers are getting, if you will, in today. It's very, very important. I'm sure you, you understand what I'm saying with reference to the school system or whatever. But anyway, so anyway, enjoy that. But I still, I still, I still offer uh, a, a request to the to the gay, 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 gay pride folks on that day that I'd be willing to be a participate on the parade if they moved it another week and then at least recognize Father's Day. Okay, so with that, I made that statement. Let's get, let's get down into in the quote. Uh, what do you think? We, we, we've had the primary. We're right in the midst of the election, if you will, in that point. First off, just give me just a little overview of, uh, of what you thought in terms of the messages and, 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 the, and the amount of time that was spent on education as it relates to the candidates and, and if, in fact, the media talked about that. What do you think? I, I think a lot of the people who are running for office that I talked to didn't, don't really have a very strong background in education. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, they have a tendency to look at the big, broad picture, of the educational reform mm -hmm. picture, the testing, and think in those terms. Mm -hmm. And what we really need to be thinking in is in terms of how we're educating children in the schools, individual kids, mm -hmm. and the kids in each classroom and in each school. I mean, that's that's, and, and I I don't see very many. Uh, people running for office who are thinking in those terms. What about the media? I mean, that's, that's a responsibility. Because a lot of times they're doing these media forums and, and this, that, and the other, and interviews and the like. I mean, what about a question from them to the candidate? Yeah, I... The, what do you think? The media at least, mm -hmm. at least looks at specific issues. I mean, they talked about the teacher evaluation here the last mm -hmm. the last week. They, they do talk about Common Core. They look at the issues, but they have a tendency to look at them again in a broad perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really wanted to teach kids to read and you wanted to say, let's go out to King's School mm -hmm. and teach every kid in King's School to read, and you wanted to make sure they were reading grade level of fourth grade, you're reading fourth grade, first thing you do is figure out what that means. Mm -hmm. Grade level, fourth grade, what does it mean to read third grade level? Mm -hmm. And you would have people skilled who would know that. And then the second thing you would do is find out where all your kids are. And the next thing you would do is work like heck to get them up to grade level. You wouldn't send off to some test testing company in New Jersey to send you some overall test that is going to somehow maybe work for your kids. You, that's not what you would do. And and. For me, that kind of encapsulates the problem that the people in the candidates have, and the people in government, they want to do this system instead of getting down and educating the kids that need to be educated. I mean, if you send your child to school and your child can't read, and by the fifth grade your child still can't read, there's a problem. But the problem isn't that they don't aren't passing some test that somebody made up in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. The problem is that they're not reading well, so how do you get them to read? You have librarians in there. You you have reading teachers and work with them specially, and you figure out what their problems are in you, and that's how you should be teaching children to read. You know, and, it's and it's the same with mathematics, in okay, a way. Okay. In mathematics, you should be looking and say, what are these children missing as you go along? I mean, you're teaching along, but you still are looking and saying, geez, this kid can't do, he can't divide, or he can't do fractions, he can't add fractions or, or subtract them, he can't multiply and divide. And you figure that stuff out as you go along, especially kids who are behind. And, then, and so that, that's what I think politicians miss. Okay. 
Okay. okay. Hey, before we go on, you know, there's a, there's a new there's a lot of new folks coming in this area. I mean, we're, we're growing in leaps and bounds. And we got new kids. We get new parents. Portland cetera, Public cetera, Schools cetera. getting more uh, kids. Right, are, right. They're growing right. instead and, of and going you've been backwards. On, you've been on for quite some time, but a lot of times, for the benefit of those who are there who are just sort of like not, not knowing your background or whatever, would you mind just sharing a bit in terms of how you got to this point where you are? You know, when you got an education, you know, just just bring us up to date. Well, bit. I taught I taught for forty yeah. years, not counting three years that I right. substituted in the seventies. And I've taught grade school, middle school, high school. And this was in I Portland, taught, right? I taught in Portland. I in taught in out towards past Beaverton, okay. in between Beaverton and Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. I taught in Woodburn. I taught a couple of the little places. I taught ten years up in Vancouver, what classes? in Evergreen. I it, there I kind of did all sorts of electives. But I taught math. I taught so I my master's degrees in social studies and mm -hmm. U.S. history. Mm -hmm. And I taught and I taught at least a class, one class of math for 29 years. I didn't just teach math, but I got at least a math class. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I've done in the last couple of years is I helped found an organization called Oregon Save Our Schools, which is really a protest organization. And it's really saying, look, what we're doing doesn't make sense. Let's do something that does make sense. Mm -hmm. And the testing, we don't think the testing makes sense. So those those things kind of brought me together. I was on the Portland School Board back in 79 to 83. And then I decided, you know, it's a good place to contribute education-wise. Mm -hmm. And so I ran and won. Mm. Thanks and, to the teachers right, right, in Portland, right, right, you know, right, and right, as right. a teacher, I understood the teacher issues, and the school board still isn't responding to the teacher issues. Mm -hmm. They're still not sitting down with teachers in Portland and saying, look, what is what are the problems out here in the schools where you work every day, mm -hmm. every day? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody down in the, the BESC, the Blanchard Building, mm -hmm. They're not out in those classrooms every day. Mm -hmm. So they should be asking the teachers and asking the principals, what's going on? What can we do? The problem, is, it, and they kind of seem to, to me, they being a lot of administrators, not just in Portland, but all over, mm -hmm. seem to have the same problem the political people do. Mm -hmm. They're looking at this big overall picture. We're going to bring in the common core. We're going to do this testing. Mm -hmm. we have, we're going to, we have to get kids to graduate. And how do we do that? Instead of looking and saying, what kind of education are we giving this child? Mm -hmm. or is this child getting what this child needs? Is this one? Is this one? Is this one? You can do, you can do that. You have 25, 30 kids in your class. You can think in those terms. Well, we don't think in those terms. Okay. You just touched on it a little bit. But let's, let's define, again, for the, for the viewing public, uh, let's define common core. How, one, uh, how did it originate, and how did it get to Portland, or how did it, got, how did it get to the state of Oregon, and, and, and how far is it implemented in the school system, and more specifically Portland? Well, Common Core basically is a, is a set of standards. So they're saying, okay, here's what you should teach, okay. so to speak. It's a standard. You should teach this. Now, there's a mix-up in that the standards and what you teach really are pretty much the same thing, but they want to say it's different because it's against the law in the federal government to do a national curriculum, a curriculum where you ask everybody to do the same thing. It's against the law. So reading, writing, and arithmetic, but, all things. No, I mean the curriculum itself. What okay. you're teaching, you should be teaching just these things. And it makes hmm. it, that made sense for a couple of reasons. One, different parts of the country want to teach different things maybe I mean shouldn't we be teaching Oregon history here but probably not in Vermont mm -hmm. uh, we're not teaching Vermont history but they probably are in Vermont so a national curriculum doesn't in a way make sense but it also doesn't make sense in that one of the strengths of America is the the variability the diversity those are strengths. We look at those as strengths, mm -hmm. not as weaknesses. And so if you want to make everybody in the third grade have this same exact same stuff, that's not necessarily the way that we should be going anyhow. But the, what happened with Common Core then, and they set up uh, these standards, told you it was reading, writing, and arithmetic, really. Mm -hmm. and, and they set up standards so that Everybody in the country pretty much follows those same standards now. Well, it, was, it wasn't even set up by educators. It was set up mm -hmm. by uh, a group of people working through a, the governor's association that they have. And it was set up by a large number of college professors that all got together and decided we're going to have these standards. Well, 
the deal is if everybody has the same standards, which they don't, 45 states basically right now have, this, have the same common core standards. If everybody has the standards and I'm a big testing company, I can sell to test for those standards to everybody in the country. Hmm. See? And that's where that's where it came from. Hmm. And and a lot of teachers say, oh, this is good. I like these standards better than the old ones that we had because we've always had standards. Mm -hmm. They said, we like I like these better. And the idea is to be more oriented towards really college-type thinking. They call it college and career. And so they're oriented more towards how to uh, think, so to speak, to some degree. Well, it would be fine, except that there's some problems with it. And one of the problems is that it's not generalized enough. In other words, I know that's not clear at all, but if you take reading, let's take reading, and you want to do, okay, how, how good should a kid be reading in the fourth grade? What should the kid be able to read in the fourth grade? We've always had those. But Common Core doesn't really look at that. They talk about these different things, and so what happens is that they throw everything together and start pushing for whatever is on Common Core, forgetting about all the things we've learned for the last 50, 100 years, 200 yeah. years in education, and so they implement it and just push it, push it, push it, push it, and it's fine if it if there was, there's not even something like that that exists, let alone the Common Core. They call it Core because the core idea, mm -hmm. but it's it's become a mess. And the main reason it's become a mess, two reasons. One is because they push it, push it, push it as the way to go. It's going to mm -hmm. save education in America, which is garbage. Mm -hmm. And but the second part about it is that the testing is no good. Hmm. They, it's not. What are they testing? Are they testing grade level reading? Are they testing actual writing ability? What are they testing in mathematics? They've changed a lot of the mathematics around. It's no better than it was. It's not as good as it was. When you look at the test, the sample questions, sample questions are very confusing, very difficult. There was a question I was talking to an Ilwaco teacher. She's Ilwaco, Washington, down in the coast, down mm -hmm. above Astoria. And she said in her staff room, they in her sta in a staff meeting, they put out one of the third grade questions, third grade questions. And they said, okay, is, it, is the answer A, B, C, or D? And the staff, all pretty much college graduates with five years of college and uh, master's degrees, because pretty much that's what's happening with teaching now, they split a third, a third, a third on the questions on the third grade test. A third, a third, a third. Wow. They didn't know what the answer was. Hmm. Okay, now, so this test is a mess. <laughs> and the sample questions that I've looked at, they're a mess. And you go, geez, that, I can't figure out how that go. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I did look at sixth grade, where I taught sixth grade for 14 years. I go, I can't figure that out. But, so, you got this mess test. So, the obvious answer is go in and fix the test, right? Go mm -hmm. in and fix right. these right. questions. Right. Make sure the questions, right. make sure we know what we're trying to right. test for. Okay. We don't even know that, really. Okay. Well, there's a problem. No one, you can't look at the test. No one in Oregon can look at the test to see what's on the test. So we bought this test from, you know, big, huge comp corporate corporations. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing in, and we're using it to label schools and say your school stinks if you don't get good at scores in this test. We're using it now to label teachers and say, you know, you know, what's your test scores? And we're using it to label children. And yet we're doing that, and we don't. No one in the entire state of Oregon can even look at the test. So we're using this test. So who's benefiting? Are we, I mean, who would ever think up a system like that? Well. People were making a fortune. Wow, wow. You know, Bill. Now that they put the whole thing on computer, Bill Gates put over a hundred million dollars, evidently, into it. Mm -hmm. And so now you have to buy more computers all over the country, and at twenty-seven dollars a whack just for the test. Let alone now where you, just for the kid to take tests. That's what, Ben, I'm not positive of that number, but I think it's pretty close to that. Mm -hmm. Twenty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. And so every kid in America. Practically, other than the five states that didn't do it, they're paying. They are, this money is going for these tests, which are on the computer. Don't even, don't even have to publish them. Yeah. And so, all over the country, 
These companies are making hundreds of millions of dollars, and we can't even look to see if the tests are any good. Well, what happened to the superintendent? I'm talking about the governor. Uh, the governor's bought into it. The Oregon Educational Investment Board, which originally was designed to set up as this big board to right, oversee right. oversee right. what took place in the state of Oregon for right. education, and then they found out the governor was, didn't really couldn't con couldn't control the board, so they backed off the board and made the board just now advisory. Should have seen the looks on the people's faces when they told them they were only advisory. They used to tell them they were running the place because right. they wanted to get rid of what they called the silos, these different silos. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, higher education here, and we had yeah, this, yeah. then ch early childhood, and they wanted to put them all under one board. Mm -hmm. That was a plan. Well, yeah, that was a plan until one day Ben Cannon, who was the governor's assistant then, shows up and says, by the way, you're only advisory. And so you've got this huge board, which is spending a lot of money wow. and making these decisions, which originated in Oregon, the decisions that they're making were the, the marching orders they give to the Oregon Department of Education, so to speak. Those originated from the business community. They didn't have any real involvement of teachers in that either. Hmm. So you've got these, not only these national movements pushed from people who want to make a lot of money, but we're doing it in Oregon, too. These, these, the Oregon movement. And so if you're a, going back to the original question, if you're a political person in, right, right, exactly. if you're a political person yeah. in Oregon, right. you ought to look at that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the first thing you ought to do is say, we need to sunset the Oregon Educational Investment Board. Mm -hmm. Just sunset. It's, right. it's going to sunset unless they vote for it. But that's vote number one. Just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. It's not set up to work. It mm -hmm. doesn't work. I've been at... Every meeting, I think, but two it's in the last two and a half years that they've had at the actual board meetings. For, mm -hmm. And it, I'm telling you, it's really bad. I mean, I, every every meeting I write a thing out to the Oregon Save Our Schools people that's uh, uh, it, it, it's just a cynical, you just laugh at them. Is there, are there any indicators like, uh, hey, getting rid of it from the... You got two people that are running for governor this time around, okay? Yeah, you, you got, got two Dennis people. Ritz, yeah, you got yeah, Dennis yeah, and you yeah. got... Uh, you know, I don't think either one Kitzhopper. of them. Certainly Kitzhopper isn't going to get rid of mm. it. It's mm. his board. He, yeah. Kitzhopper has a real serious problem. Mm. So does Dennis Richardson might yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Dennis Richardson's the guns in the school guy, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kitzhopper is the... It, Kitzhopper just doesn't have a... He doesn't understand education. He really believes that you need to test the kids and get this accountability system going, as opposed to having schools really look at each child and say, okay, now what does this child need? This child's two years behind. What are we going to do? But he hired Crew not too long ago. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 he was well, 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 did, was, was, yeah. He, was, was Crew coming down and talking to you guys and oh. saying, hey, I mean, this is what I'm, here's the plan? And he he did, had we, no plan. He had no plan. He had no plan. Okay. He, he didn't have a plan. Uh, they, they don't have a plan, but what they what they do instead of actually having an educational plan, they have this one that came through the business community mm -hmm. that the, when they sent out to public meetings all over the state, it was totally panned. Nobody liked it. Nobody, mm -hmm. not a, mm -hmm. you know, they had five people I think mm -hmm. out of eight meetings that actually said, mm -hmm. "Oh, this is a good plan." Everybody else was a stupid plan, and so this plan has been given to the Oregon Department of Education, mm -hmm. and that plan isn't. That plan it doesn't really deal with children in the schools very well. But you have an educator now, the, the new replacement for yeah, crew. Yeah, Rob Sack. Well, yeah. well, you have you get, Nancy Golden. Yeah, right, Nancy. And, and, and she, she's, a nice, she she's a nice enough woman, and she goes out and says this, but I sat and watched her. Mm -hmm. and there's no real pushback about, let's do some things that actually make mm -hmm. sense for children as opposed to things that look good. Mm. We were kind of the look good. I wrote a piece in on my Steve Buell, comma, Portland School Board member mm -hmm. Facebook page. And it said, you know, what we do is finesse the problems. And I was talking about Portland Public Schools, but the state is the same way. We finesse through the problems. Mm. Makes us look good. And, oh, we're, oh, yeah, we're, we, we believe in this. Mm. You know, uh, one perfect example is, is the equity policy. And Portland Public Schools has an equity policy. What's equity? What are, what uh, well, equity is is dealing with underserved kids okay. and making sure they get as good education as everybody else. Okay. And uh, we have an equity policy, and we actually take 8% extra and push it into schools where there are kids who that they're referring to as underserved, 4% for underserved and 4% 
based on uh, kids of color. Mm -hmm. And so we actually, you know, you actually do that. We do that. But we don't go, what's this kid need? Mm -hmm. We still are generalizing. We're out working with adults, trying to get adults to be less racist. Well, that's nice. But really, what we need is for those children to learn better. And we need to train adults to work better with children who are of different backgrounds mm -hmm. than theirs, who don't come with this same, where they come with this disparate background. You have a kid who, who is struggling and a, and, a, and a teacher who never struggled in her life or his mm -hmm. life, you know. But somebody like me who came out of the mm -hmm. Tillamook and mm -hmm. comes up, yeah, it's good. Give me some help in dealing with this kid. Mm -hmm. We're getting kids from Syria now. Hmm. Okay. Syria, and you know, you can always predict what kids we're going to get. We have huge numbers of kids from with foreign countries mm. as backgrounds, and we're getting kids from Syria. Well, this, what is a Syrian kid? I mean, are the what do I need to know mm. if I have a kid from Syria in my back in my in my classroom? That's where you should be helping me, not whether I'm prejudiced against Syrians. Mm -hmm. Do I like or dislike people from the Middle East? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure there's people out there who are prejudiced against people from the Middle East. But, you know, we, but we, I mean, do we? Is that the is that the focus? Is okay, let's take okay. those kids, or is the focus? How do you work with these children right, from okay, Syria? Okay, okay. And school teachers in general are pretty good about uh, working with kids of different backgrounds in terms of being willing to do it, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily have... So what did I know from Tillamook about a kid from Syria? Yeah, but I'm thinking about, since I've been here, you, you heard this business about achievement gap. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like the Bible should be here. <laughs> Look like we should have all the answers about achievement gaps. I mean, to date, well, what's what's the problem here? Well, my thing, feeling of the problem is that we're not down dealing with the kid on the, kid, on the level okay. in the classroom. We're still up here dealing with, okay, we're going to do Common Core. That's going to solve it. Well, what's going to solve it is that this kid's behind, right. and what are we giving this kid to catch him up? That's what's going to solve it, not this generalized approach. And and I really believe that that's the case. You want to, the achievement gap, the achievement gap is, is got a lot of little interesting things about it. Hmm. You got kids who come in. If you're, if you have this huge disparity in your background, mm -hmm. I went to my one of my great niece's birthday parties, first birthday party. There were 25 people there, maybe 30. Everybody brought gifts. A bunch of the gifts were books for this little one-year-old. And everybody was, whatever I can do, people brought in everything. But what I'm saying is, here's this tremendous, this tremendous support group that that little girl has. Mm -hmm. And that little girl's going to walk out into the first grade or kindergarten she, she's going to reap all the benefits of that support system. So how are you going to catch up with her if she keeps learning yeah. if you come in with no support system and no books yeah, and yeah, all that? Yeah. You, so the, the achievement gap is more how do you take children who are struggling and move them ahead? I mean, the expectation for me is that it's going to be tough to catch that little girl from somebody coming out of a home that doesn't have that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so how do you do that? How do you catch all the way up? It's pretty darn hard. Well, you know, I mean, there's things you need to do, right. but it's, but what it, it's more what opportunities you're creating for kids right. versus the fact that there's somebody out there who's racist that's holding this right, kid back. Right, right. Somebody who doesn't like Syrians, that's why the kid's not getting right, Well, right. the kid's not getting there because he speaks Syrian when right, he shows up, right. doesn't speak any, whatever they speak in Syria. Right. I don't know if it's probably a Farsi, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, uh, but whoever should, I mean, he's speaking a foreign language. Guess what? It's going to be a long time before he catches up mm -hmm. with kids be, mm -hmm. who are walking, speaking English and, mm -hmm. and are reading in the as four-year-olds or five-year-olds, and this kid comes in and he's... Well, shouldn't the ESL be an inclusion area? For the oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Where, where you, <laughs> Portland Public Schools does, does, isn't doing, in my opinion, a very good job in ESL. Jeez. We need to have we need to really have a good, solid, what they call newcomers program. Mm -hmm. We have a good one, we just didn't include enough kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to have a couple hundred, handful of hundred kids involved. With so when you come into Portland Public Schools, you should have all this extra help getting you English skills. Mm -hmm. And you, we should be doing that fast so then they could go out into this school. Good point. Well, look, when we get back, we're going to take a short break, folks. But when we get back... Syria, I, they I, speak I, a, a, 
Arabic. Don't yeah, I, I like, like that. that but you know, but at the same so time, I want you to respond a little bit to this. You think, if you will, the leadership locally is like important, but like the superintendent, if you will. We happen to have a superintendent named Carolyn Smith, however. But that particular position should have the, if you will, the logic, if you will, of some of the things you're talking about. I would think they should be, they should have that kind of a background to be able to communicate, if you will, whether to the board and or to the to the to the whole organization. They are the CEO, if you will, of the organization. Well, anyway, hopefully you'll comment on that when okay. we get back. We're gonna take a short break, folks. We'll be back, with Mr. Steve Buell, talking about education. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and my co-host today, which is in all due respect, he's the guy, the lead guy in the education arena, as Steve Buell, and we welcome him. He's on the school board, and you heard, if you've missed the program a little bit, you're just getting in, hey, I suggest you, you get the repeat. It, it stones out there. But uh, we're talking about uh, sort of like uh, giving an update on education, and we're getting ready to go into the general election. Another purpose is to kind of educate those who are running for office, make them aware. We got... We got the governor's uh, race, if you will. We got uh, we got the we got the congressional races. We got the senatorial races. We got the legislative races. So the bottom line is that these they're going to be our leadership, and they're going to be making decisions on your pocketbook, on your pocketbook, and trying and to child's justify education. child's education and saying to you, we need more money, and but yet still your kids are not being educated. You know, so so we're going to try to see if we can get the message to them because it's all at the end of the day, you know, we just want a productive society, people that get along, people that can work for a living. <laughs> And pay their fair share because it's all about rent. Because anyone who doesn't pay their rent, guess who? Else? You have to pick up the tab. Okay. So in it, on that note, I got Steve here. We were talking, and uh, and right before I right before we broke, I we was talking about the, the the you know just where we should go, et cetera. And I was asking him the question about the superintendent. This is a definition. There's superintendents all over the state, but here in the Portland Portland metro area, we got Carolyn Smith. She just recently got a raise too. You guys gave her a raise. Haven't given her a raise yet. You, you gave her Haven't a raise. voted on it yet. You gave her a raise. And, and Haven't as I, voted on and it as yet. As I to give her a raise, but I'm not going to vote for it. And listen to this, this, that, and the other. She should be very knowledgeable about the, some of the things that you were talking about when we were talking about the first half of the deal. So, well, what do you think? I mean, um, is is that position really working and helping out with with some of the concerns that we're here sitting here, here talking? That, and we're the, not talking about her personally. I know. What I'm saying. Well, I, but I, the position. I but the I need position. to talk about her personally okay. too. Well, I okay. like her yeah. as a person. Yeah. I don't hardly know anybody who doesn't. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she's a wonderful person. The the problem that I see is that she has got a school board, which basically she works for. Right. And the school board's directions that they go are all messed up. Mm -hmm. And so if your school board's directions are messed up and they're telling the superintendent the direction to go, it's pretty hard for her to have a good, solid, straight direction mm -hmm. because the school board is messed So I, if the school board changes over and let's say they had four different people or five different people and those people weren't we're thinking more in terms of good education for kids versus mm -hmm. other issues that end up taking place at the school board, then Carol Smith might be a really good superintendent. I don't know. Hard hmm. to see. Hmm. And so I, so the jury's still out. The, a lot of the directions that she's gone so far have alienated and irritated people. Mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, the, 
the teacher negotiations was horribly handled, but really she didn't get in till the end. And when she got in, it actually seemed to get a little. I mean, it got a lot better. Mm -hmm. But but she was also, in a way, the school board and her were in charge of deciding what they were doing. And for months, they didn't do anything that made any sense. I mean, I sat in those back rooms all the time, going. On the executive so who sessions. was leading the charge? Was who the knew? Board Nobody knew. No, I didn't know. I, I was sitting in the ex in the executive sessions and mm -hmm. watching it all, and I didn't have any idea who was in wow. charge. Wow. I had no idea. It was totally dysfunctional, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that went on for months. Hmm. And then the funny part is that people will tell them, oh, you did a good job because it only took 10 months, and look at all that you accomplished. Well, A, we didn't accomplish that much, really, little things. We didn't really have a big thing that we accomplished other than settling the contract without a strike, mm -hmm. which we almost had. Mm -hmm. the first one in the history of Portland, which mm -hmm. would have been a national, big well, national, you, big deal. Yeah, and, and, and it, we just fooled around with it for eight months. And then we went crazy for two months as hard as we could. And during that time, the everything shut down the whole school system shut down basically because mm -hmm. everybody was so busy doing that we didn't so what did we accomplish with that piece did uh, we accomplish anything well we ended up with a contract right the, uh, the, but from the kids standpoint the one, the, the, oh from the kids yeah, standpoint did, did we accomplish anything no we fought against a lot of the things we meaning the school board and mm -hmm. superintendent fought against a lot of the things that the teachers wanted to do that uh -huh. would have would have helped the kid more mm -hmm. but the one thing we kind of accomplished, excuse me, was that the we're now hiring a little faster. Mm -hmm. So that's that. a good thing. So, yeah. so we're hiring a little faster, but we're not hiring as fast as we need to hire. Mm -hmm. But we're hiring a little faster. Other than that, they they meaning school the school board and administrators and people talk about well we accomplished mm -hmm. this but. Mm -hmm. I didn't think we accomplished you know, that much. You, you know, the other thing, as I, as I hear you speak, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the feel you think. I can remember that, that there was a confusion state from a historical standpoint with the board at one point in time. And there was a Elaine Cogan. Remember Elaine? Yeah, I remember Elaine Cogan. Cogan. I remember Elaine coming to the to the board, and she was a consultant there for, for a, bit, a bit. And one of the changes she made I thought was very effective, the superintendent was always the lead person. She was sitting right up front in the middle if you will, at one point in time. And Elaine suggested that, no, the superintendent is not the school board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People, she should sit on the side. Mm -hmm. and, and that made a lot of sense. And and and, uh, and so, it, my point, it wasn't just the, the superintendent running everything. It, it was the people's voice, you know, it was just with, the, with, the, with the board members. And so, but she was giving some advice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think something like that would, uh, now I'm not talking about just that, but the fact that with Elaine's background and that, that kind of a person background, to be able to sit down at the table and get the two factions together, to, and she represents the kids the, in the classroom and whatever, and say, hey, blah, 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 blah. Would I, that be an impact? With, I don't think it have impact? any, no, I don't think so, because the school board general, uh, uh, rationalizes what they're doing. Hmm. I've been talking and talking, talking and pushing and pushing, that, trying yeah. to do, yeah. trying to have us run like a government body right. should run, right. okay. with open decision making, transparent, right. Right. those types of things. And I just, you know, might as well be talking to the curtain over there. Wow. I mean, they don't, they, they don't seem to get that part. Mm. I mean, for a long time, the first six months I was on there, uh, Greg Blau, who was the chairperson, he just kept shutting me down, shutting me down, shutting me down, shutting me down. Couldn't make a motion, couldn't talk, da 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 da. At least the the uh, new chairperson is a little better. Hmm. I mean, we actually she actually let me ask the teacher, uh, the teacher president, teacher union president Gwen Sullivan came in to talk, and she I said, can I ask a question? And it used to be no, can't ask a question. Last time she said, no, can't ask a question. You can't ask a teacher union president a question in public. But she actually let me ask the question. So maybe they're making, maybe they're getting better. Who knows? But I mean, it's nuts. It's literally wow. nuts. Here wow. comes a teacher union president representing 2,800 teachers. She gives a talk on something that's important to them at the school board meeting. And in the past, you couldn't ask her a question. Mm -hmm. You can't clarify anything. They don't, because they don't care about that they got their own little system that seems to work for them mm -hmm. and then they just go with it and too bad if you don't like it it has nothing to do with good government mm -hmm. it all has to do with centralizing the power and the decision making around 
those really there's four board members now mm -hmm. basically that are kind of acting as a well you know you, you and i we've had our little disagreement in regards to the districtizing we, it is a districtized system uh, but yet still it has to run citywide and yeah and yeah, in, well, in I the don't, past but yeah. my point is that but my point is that is that you need money to run citywide you know and you know you Bunch need big big money and maybe depending on the situation, exactly. but yes, if you have anybody who's pretty good, like uh, right. uh, Pamela Knowles, who's yes. now the chairperson, then no one really ran against her yeah, because money. she can get the money. She can get the money. She can get, she the, can money. get the money. And, and yeah. then I'm thinking about, so so who's going to be thinking about the kids? So so it's like this controlling element it was sort of like identifying with the, the school board, you know, because they know people can't run state citywide. So... What what are you thought? You're, you're thinking about uh, changing a little bit about about. Uh, oh, you mean talking about right? I like the old system. Running, what about I like in the old system, which is which kind of, and I don't mind the running in districts. The problem with the districts is that you really get oriented towards your district, and then there's six other districts, and there's a big. It's different a little bit than something like the ESD, which runs in districts like that. Because now, should I only be interested? Clearly, only in what takes place out there in North Portland. But then why not? History. If you put it on the table with everybody well, but, else, you got well, to vote but, on the issues, right? Yeah, but what I'm saying is okay. that really, I should also, I should be just as interested in a kid up in. in Selwood, as I'm I agreeing, am. I'm agreeing. That's, that's and, the whole idea of the but, discussion. Though, but right? I don't have to be right. if they don't all vote on me. I like the old system that they had when I ran before, which what was, was you picked. They were all just numbered one through seven, right? And there, and then they every two years, three and four came up, and you picked the spot you wanted to run. You didn't think that that this guy was doing a good job, and you go run against. Oh, I him. see. So you and, you, and you so pick you, your district, and then you, you still know. are voted on, but you pick your district who you think you want to take off mm, of there, or mm. who Would you, you should still have to be running, running citywide though. That's you still, heavy. yeah, That's it's, heavy, well, it's real heavy. You know, the mayor's race. All three of the mayoral candidates right. had over a million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I raised seventeen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, mm -hmm. three thousand of my own money, and twelve thousand of teacher money. Right, right. And I was had that sneak up campaign, yeah, yeah, right, which right, so right. I wasn't out raising money, which right, you need right, to. Right. And, and I had seventeen thousand dollars, and the Portland Public Schools district is bigger, bigger mm -hmm. than the city of Portland. So that's a real good argument. To run in districts, mm -hmm. you can go in the district, yeah. shake people's yeah. hands, see yeah. everybody, and, yeah. and you only yeah. have to run in yeah. a small area. Right. So right. 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 I don't know. Right. I, I like I say, I it's it's a tough one. We've got the worst of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can only run in districts. So, for instance, uh, there's a uh, I probably wouldn't have run against Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. I might have run against. I mean, there was a couple of blanks mm -hmm. trying to run there. Mm -hmm. Well, the minority issue is always an issue. They have to have one. But I mean, yeah, they have to have one. The blanks were, but yeah, but I would, you know, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, it, yeah, I took off the, I took off the one guy, mm -hmm. really, who was really visible. Yeah, right, right. Matt right. Morton talks in terms of Native American his right, background right, right, and right, stuff, right. and that's right, and right. He, that's where but the he kind of focuses. Black, but but he black was, black right, he's power. right there. He. Uh, Gonzalez was right there, and he, he wasn't was a bad guy. Gonzalez wasn't a bad guy. Not a bad guy. Not a bad guy. So what was... But the point was, I didn't think he was doing what you needed mm -hmm. to do for education, mm -hmm. educating all the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was, and, but, and but I, that, that's the only guy I could run against. And I wanted to get at this testing. I wanted to get at educating all the children. But but, and, but at the same so time, I stuck. But at the same time, Steve, that there's this I thing. Move, that there's this thing about the fact that hey, if you're Hispanic, you got to deal with Hispanic things only. That's what that's what we expect you to do. Well, and the I same thing know. with blacks. I mean, the same I situation guess. there. I, don't I mean, know. it's a sad note, but I mean, that, that's the perception that, that's out there to a certain degree. Now. Uh, what about, let's say, what about if, if we, one were to inter identify the issues and then give it to the to the public and people who, who do you want to run? You know, identify the issues. Here are the issues that we're faced with today and then let people run run accordingly. Yeah, it's a system to do that. I, I You mean 
as a as a school board thing? No, no, no. It's not uh, running it's for just office. Just in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what Oregon State issues, our Schools blah, blah, tries to okay. do is identify the okay. the education issues right, right, for people. Right, the, right. Here's big issues, and you, even getting a little fights over what the issues yeah, are. Right, right, right. But it's, but it's yeah, a, yeah, identifying yeah. the issues. That's, that's one of the things that we're trying to that's do. And then and then educational background. But when I think about you, I'm thinking about all the other school board members. How much how much history do they have in the in the in the classroom? Uh, of, I, of the people that are there, how many? Well, Bilal taught a year, I guess. That's and, a year. Okay, yeah, then. years ago. <laughs> and taught music. How about the rest and, of And uh, Pamela Knowles substituted, I think, a year. Yeah, but and then, know. well, Matt Morton runs a school. But I'm talking about the classroom now. I'm talking well, about in the classroom. I don't know. I don't think he was okay, how about in the, the others? classroom. No, not that I know See, of. I'm, but the, know. but it, you, it, it, it's nice to have that background, but... It, Maybe it's even it, it, just it, half, even it, just half, you know, it's, business in There's the things that I don't know about as an educator, yeah, right, you know, right, I'm not right, really a good right, business right, person. Right, right, right. Or, but, but, but have a business But, but, but the point, what bothers me about the whole, the backgrounds of the people yeah. is they'll say one thing and then won't do anything about it. There's power on the board. You can, there's yeah, basically this four-person block that can do what they want. Mm. So they'll say, oh, we don't really like the testing. But mm. nothing gets done. Mm. Or we think that we should be dealing better with children out in the schools, this mm -hmm. equity thing. But they, it ends up with adults, not with kids. Mm. Things don't get done because they could do it if they wanted because they have the four votes. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. Give me the four votes and we'll change around. Right, man. Right, we'll, right, there right. will be things that we will be doing. Mm -hmm. but to begin with, we won't have, uh, hopefully we won't have the, we've got a little, principal problem mm -hmm. in, in terms of I still get teachers all the time telling me how about these things their principals harassing them and causing and and giving them a real hard time and not listening to them well they had the tell survey where you did you see the any of the that what they called the tell survey they surveyed they surveyed the evaluation thing it, well they surveyed teachers all throughout the state okay and you can go to I think it's OregonTel.com, okay. www.OregonTel.com. And, and Yeah, and, and if you go down to, to, they had a survey of teachers, and on there is every school that was over 50% hmm. of their teachers responding. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's two questions down there. It's, if you go down, to, they're in sections, one, two, three, 7.1 section, questions two and three. And questions two, question two was similar to this. They said, "Do you is there trust and respect in your school, meaning for your principal?" Yeah. The guy who's a friend of mine who was principal of the year in Alice Opp Middle School. Guy by the name of Where's uh, that? At? It's out in in it's a big middle school in a really poor part of David Douglas. Mm -hmm. And he was principal of the year. He's, he had really high test scores. He did mm -hmm. stuff. I've been out of school and visited. Great guy. He had ninety eight percent agree or strongly agree on that there was trust and respect okay well we got school in portland that got zero percent where's that and we got another one that's got seven percent where's that and we got go look it up <laughs> well, no, 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 I'm not gonna call know. them out on I mean, but hey, they bro. are there they are there yeah, they in the, in the, yeah in the northeast so why are they still northeast. there and, well the, po the point is what are we gonna do we care do about do? that do we go out and say, wait a second, you can't run a school of none of your teachers trust or respect you? And the next question, <laughs> the, the C question, is can you go to your principal and have them deal with issues? And we got guys down at almost close to zero on that. Can't, no, I'm a teacher, I can't go in. Well, I've experienced that. And I think to a certain degree, that's the difference between me and the school board. They go, oh, well, that's not, I've experienced that. I've worked for principals what, who what, are what jerks. What is the CEO saying to you guys? What, what is the CEO saying? I'm talking about Carolyn. Is she, is she, I'm sure she recognizes that. Does she come to you guys Tom and say- Tom Curler, who I like on the school board, and okay. a really great guy. What's he deal? wants to do a 360 degree evaluation, which will find out how those principals are actually doing. And then in my opinion, what you need to do is sit down with them and say, look, why do you have no trust? Why do you have no respect from your teachers? What is the problem? Here's, and then maybe talk to the teachers and find out what's going on. Well, who's and change that. Is that who's the CEO? Is that the that's, CEO? 
Is that Carolyn Smith? Yeah, it's right? Carolyn. Bringing it up to the board, it's Carol right? Smith, and and it's the uh, and it's her next group. Yeah, of but people still, the down. buck stops with the superintendent. That's what we're paying. I know. For. I'm hoping that she'll do something about huh? that. But what do you do with her if she she doesn't respond? Well, the school board's in charge of that. No, they don't. You know, they, I don't have much say in the school board now. Well, they now don't, they don't listen to much I say. So then here's comes, they, here comes the next okay. question. Uh, they, maybe someday question. they will. Here, here comes the next question. Poor kids. That's a that's the question. Yeah, it's okay. not. It's the question. Okay. What do you do with children from poverty? Well, I'm gonna do it. Many of which, many of me. which are ch children of color. Right. What do you do? How do you get down and deal with them? Well, they have all sorts of stuff they're trying. Right. But it's still this generalized approach, not getting down and saying, mm. okay, look, what do we need to do with this kid who's two years behind? What are we doing with them? They'll maintain that they are, but you're not. we're not really, not to the degree that we should be doing it. For one thing, it's really hard if you just imagine yourself a teacher out there and you've got a, a, a classroom full of children who are have difficulty learning mm -hmm. and they're struggling along as they go from various different reasons. And you're in a you're in a, a school where your principal not only you not trust him, you don't respect him. And he treats you like a jerk and you can't really bring things and you can't mm -hmm. you're gonna what are you gonna do? Well you're gonna go down in your little hole. Yeah. And and are you going to do something that's creative or something that's really focuses on this kid? Boy, that's spooky stuff out there for a school teacher. I mean, it's hard to just even focus on certain kids. Yeah, who are really? you know? Oh, sure. And, and and are you then? What's your test scores? Now we're going to evaluate teachers with a big section of their oh, test scores. Know. What's your test scores on those kids? Well, this they they're telling you how to do it, and the way they're telling you to do it isn't really the right way, and we're not we're not in a position where we're saying okay. The, this doesn't make sense. This testing approach, the testing culture doesn't really make sense. What makes sense is each child getting the help and the support they need. And what does that take to do that? Do it doesn't that? take $7 million from the state going off to Eastern Promise right. to talk about people uh, getting together in the community. It you got to get right down to it. It's you've got to change attitudes, and you can't have principals out there being just big jerks. So what are treating we doing? people poorly so what, and expect them to really do a good yeah, but, job? But, but what are we doing again with CEOs, and old administrators? That's their job. That's what we're paying them for, and they're supposed to know this kind of stuff. Coming up to the school mm -hmm. board, who represents. Well, Beijing they wouldn't the agree with what I was saying. They think that the testing, they think that the, I mean, they're, they're, you go from Arnie Duncan at the top all right. the way down right. into the state, Governor Kitts offer, right. this is the way you're supposed to go about it, and you're supposed to do this, and here's the things. Well, in actuality, that's that's what, you know, or I can say of our schools, that's what I personally am fighting against. I want them to go down there and educate those kids. So I mean, what, really what? educate them, not generalized approach Okay, well, do you got your common course standards down? Well, yeah, but what's your what's your reading level? What what math can't you do? It doesn't have much to do with the way that we're approaching it. Now they would say, Steve. I think they would say, yeah, it has a lot to do. This is the common core, and if you can do these things, you can do it well. Not really, in my opinion. Well, well you know, again, again, talk about poor kids. You know, that graduation is the criminal justice system. It's a, it's terrible the way it's that we're justice it's system. You know, yeah, the, uh, school they, they to classify them as gang, gang members it's and just, all that other good stuff. It's horrible how we do it. I mean, it's, it's insulting to certain people. Yeah, and, and I really have and, wanted to work on that. Gee. but I can't get people really. The way you work on there's ways you can you need to work on that. And you need to get the school mm -hmm. structured in a way mm -hmm. that makes sense. So then, and you need to have these wraparound services, and you need to have these supports, and you need to uh, and you need to have the uh, cultural relevant curriculum. You need to have extra people, and there's things that you need to do, in my opinion, to begin to really make a dent in that. And is there hope, Steve? I can't get... Steve, is there hope? Yeah, there's a hope, but it's uh, over a year away. Jeez. It's the new turning over some of the school board members. So I, people can get, sit down and really deal with some of these issues. I want, I want to deal with some of these issues. 
And they get mad even if you use the term deal with. Really? We're dealing with these kids. Well, I'm sorry, but that's where we're going. We're dealing with these issues. you got well, an so issue where a lot of kids aren't learning. How are we going to deal with that? Right. It's right. not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. Let's get these kids learning who are not. Well, you know, as you know, the, the, from, 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 from on, ongoing basis, there's always been this this um, this culture, you know, this culture, entrenched culture about how Portland Public School has always been run. I mean, you, you even asked the question about what about vocad? You got vocad outside the Portland Public School. I know. Well, that, yeah, that was no vocad at all. No, no blue collar. I still remember. had a little bit at Franklin High School. You know what I'm saying? But it, it just, the middle it, schools we've decimated. And them. I can remember that time, Critical you know, area. and had Vera on the show, and I mean, I could Vera, I'm talking about the mayor, and this big push about college, and dropping vocad. Well, yeah. I mean, seriously, dropping yeah. vocad. Yeah. I mean, that was just during the time that PCC comes in, right? The community college. And they just take the vocad out of that whole deal. And all those kids are, in all, many ways, right now, are at PCC. And the law states that during those formative years, that child is supposed to be getting the best education that money could buy. So at the end of the day, they can get out on their own. If they want to go to college, they can, blah, 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 routine, whatever. But we're not doing it. We're, we're, uh, we're, not, we doing? we're not doing that direction either. God. We're not looking and saying, what, what is it that a child, exactly. what, what is it that a child really needs to yes. get along in the yes. world? Yes. And that should be our yes. foundational yes. education. Exactly. Yes, reading, exactly. writing, and exactly. mathematics right. to a certain exactly. degree. Exactly. Mathematics and writing to a certain degree. Right. Reading to a certain degree. Right. But they need all these other things too. The I was was it in the newspaper today? They were talking about financial, taking college kids and teaching them finances. Well, how about if we take, <laughs> well, you know, do you need, what about there are certain things, I mean, or, or about how about different? just, uh, how about doing uh, budgeting, how about, yeah, yeah. how about taking yeah, care of children, stuff, how about, yeah. but there, there's, and how about the art, so people can, you know, and it says in the, in, in the Declaration of Independence, pursuit of happiness is one of the three, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, how about educating for the pursuit of happiness, we do some of that, obviously, you know, but we've got this gap in the middle of this middle school mm -hmm. middle age kids mm -hmm. no we just that's where the problems mm -hmm. really start yeah mm -hmm. it starts if you can't read but we can we can identify who can read right, and we right. can give them a whole lot of extra right, help exactly, if, we, right, would, if right. we would get on it that's the first step we would get on it but when you get to that middle school we're just we're losing them we're losing in middle them. school what grade is middle school when it's six seventh eight that's mm -hmm. where we're losing so many children and we're losing them in that we're losing them in that it's not just that it will work if you, say, had sports and stuff to do with that age. You're not going to necessarily turn around, but that's where you're losing the kids. Wow. wow. We want to look at just these little data points, like how many kids are graduating. I don't have any problem with that. But really, it's not how many kids are grad. It's how many kids are going out of school able to take part in the world and able to function well so they can be happy people so they can be uh, productive uh, productive people yep. so they can be citizens good citizens that's that's what we really should be looking at yeah, yeah. you can graduate i can graduate anyway just change the standards okay. a little bit steve thank you on that particular note we're going to close folks hey those who are running for office get on them those who are not running for office get on them <laughs> folks we got a, we got a crisis here hey take care i'll see you next week we want to thank steve again it's very important our kids our education system is very important take care i'll see you next week take care bye